What's good, everybody? It is your girl, Ticket to Shine Up, all things ruthless, home of the ruthless addicts. With that being said, you guys, I want to bring you guys to the recap of season five of episode 10, Tyler Perry's The Oval, entitled Sound of the Silencer. Now, listen, this episode was absolutely crazy. And of course, your girl, Ticket to Shine, was absolutely here for all of the drama. Why does this man have this comforter over him? Okay, we're going to find out a little bit later on why the one and only Sam is in this comforter. But before we get into that, let's just dive right in. Victoria is literally losing her mind trying to figure out where the heck her son is and if he's going to blow up her spot. Well, she goes to Donald's office. Of course, Donald has yet to make it in. However, we do see that Alan is there and she's telling Alan, get on the phone and call Donald. Get Donald in here. Tell him I need to talk to him right now. So, of course, Alan does what he's supposed to do. But then Victoria, she goes into let me taunt Alan mode. She taunts him, talks about Ellie. Now, listen, for those of you that have never watched El, uh, Ruthless or all, The Oval, we know that Ellie was unalived. She was unalived some type of way by the president or more likely Victoria by the word of Victoria. So this is still a sore spot for Alan. It has literally only been a couple of days since they actually had Ellie's unaliving ceremony. Um, of course, we didn't get to see an actual ceremony, but we just know because Victoria says, was it his, was it your girl's, um, you know, services the other day, blah, blah, blah. Her parents were there. Why didn't you go? So again, this is a case of Victoria taunting Alan and Alan has just had enough. He has done, he has been patient. He has gone through more than enough. He's trying to be the ears quote unquote, the eyes and the ears for Donald. However, enough is enough and Alan is ready to let it all out. So Alan proceeds to go into the office and he makes a phone call. But before we get to that phone call, we see that Donald makes his way to the office and then he's also, and then also Cal returns into the office and he tells Cal, I want you to basically track all of Victoria's phone calls because she had a phone call that just came in and we need to trace and see who that call came from or where that call was, you know, located. How far away is that phone call or that actual phone? How far away is it from the White House? Because we're thinking that basically that it is the one and only Jason on the phone. Now, we know Victoria knows that it is Jason on the phone, but she has to be clear. She has to verify that he is somewhere in the area. And that is the goal of what? Um, that's job. That's the job for Kyle. That's what he's supposed to do. Track down that phone. So then you guys, we're going to see a moment where I told y'all Nancy was going to get her man. She not only goes to get her man, but she makes her way to the white house with her little red dress on. And then it's almost time for Richard to get off work. Now, now, um, Priscilla is there like, go talk to your wife, you know, do what you got to do, but just talk to your wife. So Richard talks to her. He sees her as he's leaving out and he lets her know, listen, it's, it's pretty much time out for us. Um, there's really nothing right now that I have to say to you. You told me that you, you know, it was hard for you to leave my father. And now I'm just simply over it. I, I can't deal with this right now. I need to deal with it another type of way. This is just not the way that I'm going to be able to deal with it. So prior to Richard leaving and talking to Nancy, y'all, we have this hilarious moment where we figured out why Sam was wearing this comforter. So just as I suspected, we see that Sam goes into the bedroom of the president. And he's, you know, the president tells him, not Eli, I'm talking about Hunter now. But Hunter tells Sam, put the blanket or put the comforter on you. So Sam thinks, okay, let me just put it around my shoulders. Now, mind you, these are some weird requests. And Sam has no idea why the president is asking him to do these things. So anyway, he complies and everybody is nervous for Sam. Like, don't go in there because the president is wilding out. You could be unalive. 
And Victoria was like, yeah, going on in there anyway. Yeah, maybe we should just send him in there. So Victoria didn't, I mean, Priscilla didn't care. She was ready to take um, <laughs> Sam out by any means necessary. However, President Hunter has has Sam looking a hot mess, a hot darn fool walking around. So he tells him, um, put, put the comforter over your head. And he does just that. Then he tells him to walk out of the door. Now, he knows instantly that... Sam was not the one that was in his bedroom. The one that was actually in his bedroom was someone much taller. However, Sam plays the role. He does as the president instructs him to do. Um, yeah, he looked like a hot mess, y'all. And Richard sees him at this point and he looks at him like, what the heck are you doing? And so, <laughs> the pre you know, he, he just goes right back into the president's bedroom and you know the president's like oh so you better be, this is one time you better be glad that you are short because you're not the one that i saw running out of my bedroom so will will hunter actually find out who it is that was in his bedroom and is hunter gonna spend the entire um season in that bedroom on bed rest hmm just the question, just the question, but I'm absolutely here for it all. Uh, there's also a moment where Sam goes to get some information and he's looking for the information that he needs to um, see who's been calling, who's been, because when Kyle went into the system, it notified Sam that someone was in the system messing around with the server. So Sam goes to look at what it is that kyle was actually looking at now this is one moment where which is the cliffhanger of the show but he this is that moment where sam is not really watching his back he's not looking over his shoulder because as he's pulling up this information donald walks in and that was pretty much the end of the episode however there's one moment i do need to tell you guys about and this is a part of the ruthless oval crossover and i'm definitely going to give you a full video of this ruthless oval crossover moment there are two moments but the one specifically is when alan contacts Desiree and Cal. So we're going to find out that Alan is ready to hand over some information to Desiree and Cal or Desiree and Cal. Is it going to be the information that he needs to take the White House down? I will give you guys that part on my ruthless oval crossover video which will come which will be coming out soon with that being said thank you all so much for tapping in and tuning in with your girl ticket to shine thank you for kicking it with me i absolutely appreciate you all if you're new to my channel find me for the first time please hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so that you can receive reminders of new ruthless content I'll
Thank you.